I'm going to start this one off. How much can a single picture tell us about ourselves? This is a composite image of several satellite photos. It can help us better understand the current developments and conflicts underway. The amount of light pollution is most severe in heavily populated areas, as well as in regions of high prosperity. In Europe, the Benelux region and the densely populated Po Valley are so bright that the individual towns blend into one big sea of light. What do you think are the five most densely populated cities on Earth? So that's going to be, what, people per square kilometer, I believe? My mind wants to say that at least two of the five are in Asia. And now that I'm thinking South Asia, maybe more than two of the five. Although I know that is very broad to say. Largest cities in general is probably an easier thing to calculate, although I know that that doesn't necessarily translate to density. But largest cities in general, Shanghai has to be up there. Or what's a big city in India? Mumbai is probably in the top five. If Mexico City isn't in the top five, definitely top 10, it's so huge. Write your guesses down below. Or just write the correct answer. <laughs> I'll also look it up though. Especially in the Arab world, the extraction of oil creates bright lights from the flaring of gas. And in Africa, you can trace the path of the Nile River, which, as the lifeline of Egypt, attracts civilization and is filled with commercial boats. Not much light on the rest of the continent, though. In the mostly uninhabited regions of Western Australia, the satellites could even capture lights from wildfires that occurred over a span of 22 days. And in Asia, the Indian subcontinent is clearly standing out. Nearly 20% of the planet's population lives here and the rapid population and economic growth can be seen by comparing the area from how it looked in 2012 and then again in 2016. What a change. However, it's just as interesting to look at the regions where there is no light. The Syrian civil war, which has wiped out hundreds of thousands of lives, has darkened the country. The video is five years old, so write any updates. Due to the ongoing fights, the electrical grid is only partially available and the power supply is poor. Aleppo, the largest city in Syria, is considered an important cultural place. The old town has been a UNESCO World Heritage Site since 1986, but the war has almost completely destroyed the historic city. The darkening can also be observed in Raqqa which has long acted as the de facto capital of the terrorist Islamic State. When we see a city darken in these images, it shows the annihilation of a place and its history, and ultimately, the end of many human lives. Looking at images of Hakka now, some parts are just leveled. I don't know what that means for how many people still live in the city. Hopefully someone watching may know that. What do you think about that pronunciation, Hakka? The R sound in Arabic languages sometimes trips me up. I think that that R sounds more similar to a Spanish R than it does an English R, so it's not Raqqa. Native speakers, please enter the chat. These black pixels in such an image can say a lot more than the lit ones. This also applies to the Korean Peninsula. While South Korea is brightly lit, North Korea is almost completely black. The metropolitan area around the capital of the South, Seoul, now has more than 25 million inhabitants. The population density here is twice that of New York City and eight times larger than that of Rome. Also the waters surrounding Korea are brightly lit from the numerous fishing boats off the coast. According to the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, there are clear rules for how far off the coast a country may explore its resources. Additionally, there are several agreements between countries that regulate fishing. This creates odd shapes and perfectly straight lines, bringing to light the absurdity of dividing our planet into arbitrary legal zones. 
all these lights from South Korea and the waters that surround it stand in stark contrast to the north, where only the North Korean capital Pyongyang stands out a bit. North Korea's energy infrastructure is obsolete and power shortages are frequent. While South Korea is easily accessible, much of what happens in the north remains in the dark. And the strictly guarded border dividing both nations, the DMZ, is clearly traceable. Wild to see how the water off of the coast of South Korea is brighter than the country of North Korea. There was a moment in time where I was borderline obsessed with learning about North Korea. And was it a phase? I don't know. Because any time I see on my home screen that a YouTuber has gone to North Korea, I must click on the video. It's such an elusive place. But from this map, it could be good for stargazing. So, you know, there's that. This image may be the most impressive illustration of how big the impact of more than 70 years of division are. But the map also teaches yeah. us the long-lasting impact such separations can have, even those that have already been overcome. At the time of the Cold War, Germany was separated into East and West, and the city of Berlin was divided as well. And as a result of that, its city lights still appear in two different colors. The western part of the city was cut off from the rest of West Germany and relied on gas lamps because it wanted to be independent from a possibly failing power supply. Although Germany has been reunited since 1990 and this separation has been overcome for more than a quarter of a century, it can still be seen from space. This image points to the global challenges posed by the steadily increasing world population. And while man-made borders cannot be seen during the day, the lines of political origin become apparent at night, but appear all the more absurd and artificial. When viewed during daylight, the human influence on our planet is less obvious. But this single image highlights the social divides and political strife from both the past and the present. Mm. Okay. That was from a channel called Neo, which I will link in the description for you, along with this specific video. I'm not sure that I've seen anything from them in the past, although their profile picture looks really familiar, so I'll have to check it out. But if you have any other recommendations from them, just tell me the title down below. And now I'm trying to think of other places on the map that might be dark. We didn't see much of South America, but there may be some countries that are a bit darker. Ecuador or at least parts of it, parts of Peru, Nicaragua. Uh, I'm trying to think of places that have indigenous populations as well. Parts of Colombia. And then what's that desert in Chile? <laughs> Atacama? Atacama? Well, let's just say deserts are also dark spots on the map. Let me know if you can think of any others. This video could have been way longer. I ended this one with questions. For example, I'd like to see what India looks like now and how much it's changed from 2016. Or what else was I wondering about festivals? Oh, yeah, If a festival like Carnival in Brazil is on or Diwali in India, does that change the light for the time that it's celebrated? Or no fact. And then there's also... There is, no. There are more wars now than there were then. So I'd like to see the effect on that as well. If you know of an updated version of this, please tell me. Other than that, leave your thoughts. As far as books, I'm still finishing some of the sci-fi recommendations I was given a few videos ago at this point. I have two left. And just an update on that, I still don't think that's the genre for me, but looking at things on the bright side, I now have way more suggestions to give you guys next time we watch a video on science or space in general. And once I finish those two, I'll probably go back to just reading classics because I want to finish more classic literature this year. If you have any recommendations on that, let me know. I just finished over the weekend um, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. I'm not sure that I've ever even seen that Disney film, although I knew of the story. And I will actually link you the YouTube page that I listened to the audiobook version on, because they have so many LibriVox recordings. At this point, I'm considering moving on to another platform to extend this music segment. I don't know, videos worth of music segments. 
maybe just watching music videos and talking about music because it's easily becoming my favorite part. But because this video is just places on the map, I will pick artists from around the world, which I'm gonna use as an opportunity to talk about this guy I recently started listening to. He's called Gabor Zabo. I mistakenly thought he was from Brazil or Portugal. It turns out he's Hungarian, a Hungarian artist, guitarist specifically. His music is native, but also mixed with jazz and rock. The song I recommend to you is called Spellbinder. Something about it reminds me of Glass Beans, if you know them. But he is from the 60s, I believe. You have to let me know how you like this one. And next, there's Making a Fool of You by Home Shake, who I recently found out is not a band or group. It's just a solo artist from Canada who definitely falls in the alternative genre. Some songs are R&B, lo-fi. Although this song isn't on the Midnight Snack album, if you end up liking the song, move on to Midnight Snack because almost every song off of that album was good to me. So you'll, you'll tell me your opinion. And lastly, Minnie Ripperton's Lovin' You. This is a song I was looking for for maybe years, at least three years. I would remember the lyrics every, I don't know, X amount of months and then try to Google the words that I did know. If you know the song or you end up listening to it, you're gonna easily see why it's silly to try to Google the chorus. It's just mostly sounds. This woman hits such high pitch. Think Mariah Carey, but from the 70s. In the soul, R&B, maybe pop of that time genre as well. So that's really all I have for you today. Leave your thoughts on this. Thank you for watching with me and I'll catch you next time.